Good afternoon and welcome to the CIS webinar number eight. Uh, now it's becoming a, a, a custom for us to, to meet you every Wednesday. The topic a webinar will be Stadia, but before that I would uh, remember to everybody what the CIS uh, Centre International d'Etudes du Sport, International Centre of Sport Studies uh, webinar is it's 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 aimed to uh, to discuss some of the main issues international sports is dealing with, and we use our network of former graduates, colleagues, and representatives worldwide. And today it's a very worldwide session, as as you will be able to see. Uh, our theme is Stadia Day, Managing the Empty Theatres of Live Sports. Uh, I would like to introduce our four speakers, starting with Cem Ulkeroglu, FIFA Master for the first edition, uh, almost 20 years ago. Cem is in Istanbul, in Turkey. What time is it in Istanbul? 2.30 in the afternoon? 2.30, yes. Cem <laughs> uh, uh, was, uh, for many years, uh, in charge of... Uh, the Korean uh, of the Turkish uh, Football Federation uh, um, um, management department and, and on, on media, and is currently uh, the CEO of a of a of a, um, a sport marketing company. Uh, welcome, uh, Jim, and I hope to see you to, to, that we have a fruitful discussion. With you. Thank you. It's great to see you, and thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, from uh, Santiago de Chile, uh, where it's 7.30 in the morning, I would like to introduce Michael Boyce. Michael Boyce is a very good friend of CIS, he's our uh, CIS representative in, in, in Chile, and is uh, uh, the, the coordinator from CIS uh, in our program with uh, Universidad Santo Tomas for many years now, and is, uh, is as well a CEO of a company, and uh, uh, is the um, he is a general coordinator for FIFA uh, for, for for FIFA events. Uh, welcome, Michael. And uh, uh, how is the situation and how is the time in, in, in Santiago? Thank you very much, Pierre. Uh, happy to be here discussing with uh, with the colleagues and uh, and you. It's seven thirty a.m. in Santiago. We're I mean uh, we're in lockdown, full lockdown, as uh, as almost everybody. And uh, and just uh, like six weeks uh, behind Europe in uh, in the process of this uh, pandemic. Thank you, thank you, Michael. Now let's move. Uh, uh, still in winter, but another part of the world. Let's move to Cape Town in, in South Africa. Uh, with Max Grunewald. Max is uh, uh, the CEO of uh, Cape Town FC, former alumni of the uh, CIS network. He did uh, his diploma at. Uh, at uh, Nelson Mandela University in in Cape Town, uh, and uh, it, it did a very very nice final project on stadiums. Actually, uh, how are you, Max? And how is the situation in uh, in, in in Cape Town? Um, thanks for having me, uh, Pierre. It's always nice to connect with you and to welcome to everyone watching. Um, the situation in Cape Town is that we are currently in lockdown since the twenty seventh of March already. So that is roughly nine weeks. Uh, not an easy time, but um, also a good time to reflect and to maybe see other things um, and also spend some time with the family. So that's great. I just need to correct you, Bear. I'm not the CEO, but I'm the channel manager of football. Oh, so, sorry. The, the general manager of football. I, I don't yeah, want just to for the protocol to have this correct. Absolutely. I don't want to create <laughs> any problem in your company. Uh, uh, our last guest from, for today, well, it's always it's already evening for him. Is Dujin Sa who did the FIFA Master uh, for the at, uh, at the seventeenth edition? Hi, Dujin, who is uh, meeting us from uh, from uh, uh, from Seoul in Korea. So as you as you can see, we have a male only group, but a very diverse group uh, coming from all parts of the world. Uh, Dujin is working for the Korean FA and is uh, particularly in charge of, of uh, managing the events and managing uh, the, the Korean League. Yes? Uh, well, uh, how, uh, how are you, Eugene, and how is the situation in, in, in Seoul? 
Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for having me on this. Uh, yes, the uh, the COVID-19 spread into this country in February, but uh, around the mid of April, the infection ratio suddenly decreased. And fortunately, we could start the league uh, at early of uh, May. And up to now, there has been no issue raised and there has been no infection case among uh, players and coaches and working staffs. So, yeah, but we are still very cautious and yeah, updating the COVID-19 guideline every day. Great. No, you, it's great that you, you started this way. It will allow us to, to go straight away to the key issues of, of our daily, uh, daily uh, topic. I mean, uh, football is a very uh, public event. There have been a lot of discussion during the month of March and early April in Europe about the impact some football matches may have had in spreading in spreading the illness, but uh, a lot of the debate recently has been has been towards the fact that stadiums should they be uh, used for matches? Should we wait? And one of the one of the questions is to understand uh, the difficulty uh, to 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 develop the, the the games in a situation like this one. Could you slowly j just shortly say? Uh, each of you, how it has uh, been in your home country. Uh, I would like to, to start with South America. Michael, can you tell us uh, what's happening in, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Chile and what, what is expected at the moment? Well, actually, the situation in Chile is more or less the same in, uh, in the rest of South America. Uh, most of the countries are in, in lockdown. We are, as I mentioned before, we are uh, around six to seven weeks behind uh, in the wave uh, from, uh, from Europe. So essentially, we are currently entering the peak uh, of the pandemic here in, uh, in, in South America. So essentially, stadiums have been closed for now eight to, to nine weeks. Uh, no leaks at at any level, uh, and obviously it it, it is a, a big blow uh, to to the clubs uh, and and to the league to the organizations uh, itself. Uh, currently, there is no plan for return. I mean, there is a lot of plans of uh, of return uh, from Comebol and, uh, and and the local federation, uh, but there is no kickoff for the uh, planet for that uh, for that plan. So, uh, so essentially, um, everybody is waiting for the local authorities to to uh, to kick off uh, or to uh, foresee a date. Uh, for restarting the activities. So far, the local authorities have said that uh, once we, we restart the physical activity, it will be the individual activities rather than, uh, than collective and, uh, and uh, like uh, sports like football, rugby, basketball, etc., etc. That will be left for the, for the end of, of the whole process. Yeah, what, what's the situation in, in, in Turkey, Jim? Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's the, the leagues have stopped by the middle of March and it's still uh, closed. And uh, the, the plan is that the leagues will be restarting on the 12th of June. And tomorrow the Federation will be having a meeting with all the clubs again, um, just to see whether everything is going well, according to the plan, etc. And we're expecting it to, to start at 12th of June. But the problem is not with the top division, actually. The problem is more with the uh, lower divisions in amateur football. It uh, seems like there's not a concrete plan at this stage. And, yeah, we'll see how it's going to develop. Great. Yeah, thank you very much to, to hear that. Max, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in South Africa, the leagues take the same uh, Calendary as the European leagues. You started uh, in 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 our autumn, your 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 spring. So, you, what is the situation at the moment? Yeah, that's correct. The league is uh, going in the same way as it goes in Europe. So we have roughly uh, eight more games to play. So we are almost at the end of the season. Um, the situation is that at the, at this stage there is no sport activities from a professional organized environment. So you can do yourself 
you can go out in the mornings and do your run, but as a but no football activities. Um, we're going from Monday onwards, we're going to a level three, um, which might allow us to go back, but that is subject to the government approving it. Um, I believe there is um, some proposals given to them or will be given to them. I'm not sure what the current state is now of that um, application, but there is a hope that we might can still finish our league. Great. Uh, so, Dudin, you are the only one of the group where it started again, as you as you explained us. Uh, you were as well the earliest touched country. Tell us a little bit about the, the results and what's for first matches, what is shown to, to have matches in empty stadium. Hmm. Uh, before that, let me briefly introduce how the thing has been going. Uh, COVID-19 spread into this country. So the opening match was going to be held at the start of May, at uh, start of March, it had to be postponed. Uh, fortunately, the number of COVID-19 cases significantly decreased in the middle of April. And the uh, K-League uh, decided to start a new season based on deep uh, discussion with the medical expert group and the government. Uh, up to now, we finished the third round of a total of 23, uh, 27 rounds uh, without spectator. Uh, yeah, there has been no issue raised. So the best scenario is to accept the audience at the stadium. But our main goal in this season is to uh, just finish the season completely and safely. So, yeah, now we are keep uh, we keep uh, communication with the medical expert group and the government still great so it's uh, uh, what is interesting when we prepare this this uh, this meeting this this webinar you explained us that there is as well a slight possibility to to accept some public before the end of the scene a slight a removed possibility but it's still possible is it is it, am I right when I say that? Yes, still uh, we are considering for the K-League, uh, the next step is accepting spectator, of course. Uh, we are considering to fill the stadium only around the 40% or 50% of uh, total stadium capacity. But, you know, we should be very cautious uh, every day there has been new uh, infection case coming up. So, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. the government and the League Federation, both of them are very cautious to accept right. the audience. No, no, it's, it's, it's just uh, very important to see that, that uh, the first object is, is to understand. Well, mm. I, would, I would move to, to Chairman and ask, you were in your past occupation in charge of uh, of uh, showing lives live matches to showing matches in st in empty stadium in the past for for completely different reasons because the uh, turkish national team had some problems with referees in the past so various matches uh, were, were 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 decided to be played with the public and I know it's it's a difficult uh, business. How did it work? Uh, what were the consequences of it? And what do you think uh, the main difficulty uh, the the leagues and the and and and, and the football authorities may be facing in showing uh, matches in an empty stadium? Well, yes. I mean, that's right. We had some uh, fine from uh, FIFA to play. Uh, uh, three home matches for the 2000 European qualification, European Championship qualification, away from home and behind closed doors. So I was, let's say, one of the persons in charge of that uh, organization. And uh, well, basically, and what I can say is that it's, it is really, really difficult um, because it's not, it's just not the TV broadcast or, or anything else, but it's also. The, the sportive side of things, the, the players, you know, how they feel playing against the uh, the empty stands, etc. 
So, I mean, if you think about the organization, it's of course much easier because when you don't have people coming, you really don't need any security or, you know, and everything related to it. That's the, uh, that's the good side of it. But uh, of course, I mean, when you don't have people in the state, in the stand, it's the, the product, let's say, speaking from the uh, business point of it, the product is incomplete. So, and it affects many things. So it's not just, uh, it is not just, uh, it's okay for just one single game. But, you know, when it's uh, spread during the course of some period of time, let's say three months or six months, then it's a, it's a big problem because uh, your broadcast product is incomplete and it is lacking. As, as we say, you know, when we license TV rights to a broadcaster, we license the rights called audiovisual rights. So here you don't have, have the audio. You have the audio, but only to some extent just for the players and coaches shouting, etc. Uh, but you don't have the stadium sounds which is, you know, basically written in contracts, that stadium sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, so broadcast side, the product is incomplete. Of course, you don't receive ticket revenue, which, which should be, for every club, which should be the number one revenue stream. I mean, as you rightly put in the, in the heading of this webinar, so it's the theatres, you know? So what the theatres do, they rely on the ticketing income. So it should be the same for, all, of course, with the clubs. And again, as, a, as an indirect effect, the sponsors' revenues or the advertising, let's say, uh, which, you know, some clubs just sell advertising, some go, some go only with sponsorship. So sponsorship and advertising revenue, it also will decrease in time to come if this kind of an atmosphere is going to continue. Well, uh, I, will, I, will, I will give the floor to Michael, but clearly one could, one could answer to that, that probably what people wanted is true football to be played again. And that's the first step towards getting true football on the, on the field, because uh, people were a bit tired to see, uh, to play on their, on, 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 their, on their video games or to watch uh, old matches. So one of the questions is, is probably to have true football on it again. Did, do, is it is it the key issue that is discussed well in in uh, in, uh, in South America at the moment? Yeah, obviously restarting uh, the games is uh, is critical uh, because that's a way how you uh, for the clubs you start receiving income coming from uh, both the TV broadcasting uh, and uh, and also sponsors. Um, once you restart, uh, the, the you know the, the ball would start would start uh, playing being played again, uh, and that's the first step. Uh, then the second step, as as Cam was uh, uh, was saying, uh, Cem was saying, uh, the will be having spectators on uh, on on board here in South America. Uh, there is a, a huge and a whole culture. Uh, around uh, going to the stadium, probably ha you have seen uh, uh, everywhere uh, stadiums uh, packed in Brazil, in Argentina, with this uh, a big barras, their supporters uh, chanting the whole the whole match. So uh, that's something that is uh, not going to happen in the near future. Uh, everybody is uh, trying to assume that, but it's not easy. It's not e easy for the clubs. Uh, it's not easy for the players. Uh, it's not easy for TV because uh, the product is going to be completely different. We've seen that on uh, on, on TV already uh, with Bundesliga or other uh, other leagues that have been uh, uh, have been in play. Um, and there's a side effect on on this that will be long lasting, um, and will be uh, regarding to sponsorship. I mean, uh, the the sponsors. Uh, this is a big uh, economy blow. Uh, all over the place, and and uh, and sponsors will essentially have less money to spend, and that will have a huge impact both on uh, directly on the clubs and uh, indirectly through the broadcasters, because uh, most of the broadcasters they they finance themselves through uh, through um, advertising, uh, and essentially those two uh, areas will be uh, will be damaged uh, by uh, by this current situation. So uh, I see that moving forward there will be a, a big adjust in in the whole industry in order to uh, um, uh, to slowly come back to the previous situation but with many changes uh, from uh, what we had before 
Yes, uh, Max, tell us a bit about it. Yeah, um, uh, first of all, I, I would like to I would like to moment. agree. <laughs> I would like to agree with Cem that um, the product as we know it or as as far as we knew it uh, is definitely not complete anymore from a business but also from an emotional part. Um, the reason why we play this game or why we involved in the game is definitely the, the atmosphere and the surrounding. Um, so to have a game without fans, something is missing. But probably this is for now the, the new new. And that is our new product, and we have to deal with it. Uh, probably it also takes quite some time till we can come back to our old product. Um, in South Africa, we probably fortunately that we're not necessarily depending on the or solely depending on the revenue streams from entry tickets. Um, I mean, the, the average attendance is no secret. Um, the entrance fees which the clubs are charging is no secret so that's probably a very small uh, amount in the in in the big revenue stream of a club with us it's more the tv money uh, probably similar like in, in in the big european leagues uh, hence to come back to to play uh, even if it has to be for now uh, in front of an empty stadium that is the key to secure the status of the clubs uh, and to survive Mm -hmm. Yes, and what we what we what we would like to know from 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 Korea is uh, what has been the attendance on television the first matches. Uh, mm. uh, did it work? Did did were the sponsors happy? Did so, did the advertisement work well for these matches? Are we back to to a degree of normality from this point of view? Yes, uh, we uh, start the season with uh, with our spectator. And uh, to be specific, we much more focused on broadcasting and digital content than before. So we modified the budgeting plan from offline promotion to online content. Uh, for example, even while other organizations cut off the working force, we hired the digital content producer. So we wanted to wanted to show them that uh, we are still alive and we are still there. So regarding the opening match, we talked with the domestic rights holder and the international rights holder and persuade them to uh, stream the uh, match on free video platform like uh, Twitter or YouTube. Thankfully, they agreed with the idea and we gathered the uh, three 0.5 million viewership uh, around the world, which is much higher than uh, the last year opening match. So, yeah. F yeah. We, we saw on television uh, the FC Seoul with this, with this uh, uh, dolls on the uh, very, very, uh, very, very famous worldwide. Tell us a bit about this idea. How, how did it come? <laughs> yes, it was uh, shocking uh, to everyone, uh, even though it is a uh, club steps fault. Actually, it should not be happened. So <laughs> yeah, now league uh, gave uh, a notice to club and uh, step who made the mistake has been forced to be excluded <laughs> from work. <laughs> so yeah, that's something happened in the opening match of the FC Seoul. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what has been interesting is, is some of the ways to solve the situation that we saw recently. I mean, uh, there was uh, in, uh, um, just before the, 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 the big COVID block happened, there was a cup final of the African Cup of Nations, of the African uh, Champions League, where uh, the match should have been played and, and uh, was played under, under, sh under shut doors and where they, they started with new technologies. There is a lot of discussion currently about atmosphere, giving the impact of the atmosphere. I know, Chem, that uh, that's a topic you're very interested in. Uh, what do you believe this, this new technology can add to empty matches? Well, actually, there are a lot of things going on now. I'm trying to follow what, uh, what people are trying and uh, you know what they're trying to implement in other parts of the world. 
Um, for example, today, I mean, there was this article on The Guardian that uh, a company, an international company, was trying to build an app that would take the sound of the people watching at home, like clappings or cheerings, to the stadium through this app and be given to the stadium like from 50 speakers or so. Well, these kind of things can be done, of course, and uh, so you can try to enrich the broadcast, which can be done through, you know, more statistics or um, some more digital content that you can put there. But always, you know, there's always these limitations because in a, during a broadcast of a, of a football match, 90-92% of the game is, gone, is done through only one camera. The, the remaining, let's say you're making a big production, like, a, I don't know, a Euro game or a Champions League quarterfinal, it's a, you can use 24 cameras. So the remaining 23 cameras consist of time like 8%, more or less, the whole of the whole broadcast. So, you know, you, I mean, all these discussions like uh, trying to personalize the, the broadcast or focusing more with players and coaches or giving more statistics or, you know, with a second screen, uh, try to engage the fan and make it more interesting for the fan. They can all be done, sure. But uh, in sport management, what we say in general, you know, it's uh, everything is interconnected. So you cannot think of anything in sport management as a standalone thing. So it is always tied to some other things. And which, in a case like this, you know, behind closed doors, of course, I mean, these, these things can be implemented and can be fine, but uh, it is not going to produce the results of a, you know, proper match organization because, it's, you know, the stadium, stadium is the heart of the, of the whole business. Everything comes out, out of that stadium. The broadcast, the sponsors, the ticketing, the hot dog guy, the merchandising sales, et cetera, et cetera. So everything goes down there. But what I believe is that, what's, I mean, uh, for what's going to happen next is that uh, I think that the, the people will be back to the stands uh, much more earlier than uh, other other parts of the business. Mm -hmm. and I think that, you know, 2021 season is going to be very disrupted by it. Maybe, you know, allowing people to sit, let's say, uh, two seats empty between them, etc. that kind of implementation. Maybe the prices will go down, etc. But I think 21-22 season, if, of course, I mean, we're not hit again by some other virus or this one coming, popping back up. Um, I think it's going to be uh, business as usual. I don't believe that people are going to be reluctant to go in there. If they feel, if it's safe, and if the authorities say, okay, it's safe, it is going to be the first thing that's going to be back on again. Uh, I, maybe maybe you're, you're right. I mean, I, I don't, I don't uh, exactly uh, know what, 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 what will be the, the, the element, but uh, 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 Michael, before I, I give you the floor, Gustavo Garcia said, uh, from, from South America, well, he's, he's completely agreeing with your, with your, with your point of view, and they say the club are a very social factor, and there will be, and the industry as a whole will be affected. So tell us a bit more about the kind of affect the club may have from this. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a little bit uh, a little less optimistic than uh, than than Chem. I think that uh, this uh, this uh, disruption will uh, will will have an impact, uh, a long lasting impact in, uh, in in the whole game, uh, especially here in 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 South America. It's, I mean, here in South America, uh, like in Africa or or some other countries, um, it's hard to organize people. It's hard to organize people when uh, when. Uh, uh, when they are together, and that's part of the problem that we still have in the, in in the stadiums, with regards of security, safety, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but I want to give to to give also uh, um, some uh, some other uh, elements that we are we were facing here in South America before uh, entering this uh, this crisis. Uh, there was a, um, there were uprisings, social uprisings uh, all over the place. 
and uh, uh, here in Chile, in uh, in uh, in Brazil, it happened uh, uh, just before the World Cup in uh, in in 2014. You had it in uh, in uh, in Ecuador, Colombia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so that was a context only six months or a couple of years uh, uh, before this, and the stadium was part of uh, of how people. Um, was expressing them, themselves was a was a theater actually for for the expression uh, and participation from uh, from the people. So um, the uh, once once we come back, uh, we need to uh, to uh, to understand that here in South America, the context was not uh, okay. We're going back to football, but uh, we're going back to football and to discuss some other things where football or the football environment, the football culture was also uh, was also part of it. Uh, so uh, uh, that will be part of the equation. I think that uh, uh, people, uh, uh, at least at the beginning, they will be a little reluctant uh, to go to places where a lot of people will be gathering. Um, I mean, there uh, here in Chile, at least, I, I've received a couple of uh, uh, of studies uh, from uh, uh, from companies uh, that uh, they are saying that the long lasting effect will be probably around 15 percent on people going into commercial malls, into shopping centers, into cinemas, uh, and that will be like the new base. The new base will be 15 percent less people. Uh, coming into places where uh, uh, where people gather together. So um, again, Chem, I'm sorry, but I'm I'm not that optimistic. Hopefully, we get back to a situation uh, that the, that you mentioned, but I think it will take it will take a lot of time. Yeah, we we have a question from Stanislav Stipkov, who will be a, a FIFA master student for the next edition, uh, and and Stanislav was uh, was was asking uh, uh, particularly Dujin, what's the situation? with the other leagues? What is the situation in other sports? Has there been an, an agreement between, uh, a discussion between the various sports to have a national attitude for sports? Or mm. has every league worked uh, differently? And we may ask in the, the others as well about this, mm. this specific issue. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not just a top professional league, uh, including all uh, amateur league. They resumed uh, around the early of May uh, because government gave a sign, sign to go around the mid of April. So baseball started uh, around the same moment as uh, football. Uh, but the most of indoor sports league already uh, closed their league around the May. So they some uh, some leagues canceled the competition or some leagues just uh, finished the uh, league. So uh, now we have only outdoor uh, professional league uh, in this country. I see. Uh, what's the situation in, in, in South Africa at the moment? All the leagues uh, talk to each other or is there no... Uh... In Cape Town, do you speak with the other club owners, with the other with, with the other directors of other sports or rugby, for example, or cricket, or or, or does football uh, only each club does on his own? Yeah, I, I need to admit I'm I'm not entirely sure how the communication works between the football and the other sporting codes. Um, I'm assuming it's a little bit surviving of the strongest, I'm guessing. Um, everyone has an interest to return. Uh, everyone is depending strongly on it. Everyone has a responsibility to return. Um, but I cannot tell you if there is an interaction between the sporting codes. Uh, for sure, there is an interaction between the, the professional football teams um, as we all pulling in one direction because we want to return. Um, but how is it? Between other sporting codes, I, I honestly cannot tell you. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. No, thank, thank you. Thank you for your honesty on that, on that point of view. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if Jem or Mike have something to add. Uh, uh, but in, in, in your case, the sport is still closed in both countries. So it's, it's not yet. Well, one of, the, one of the elements I would like to, to, to go with you on is a question of what can, be, what can be the benefits of such a crisis for stadiums. Are new innovations uh, thought to develop, you know, the, the way to present the clubs. May, if, if we imagine uh, the, the what has happened uh, with uh, 
uh, with the hooliganism and with the Hillsborough disaster. It is there that the Premier League was created, that completely the, the English football culture uh, was the result of problems happening in a, in a stadium. Can we imagine from this point of view that some new ideas, new technology, new way of understanding life in a stadium may be starting to between the, the people, the actors of the stadium reality at the moment? Michael. Is it okay? Um, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, the the, the this will be a, a point of change uh, of the whole uh, football culture here in uh, in in South America. I expect to there's a it, it is a big opportunity. I see three at least three or four uh, big changes that will happen after this. First, uh, there will be a forced digitalization of the experience. It it is happening in all the industries. Uh, and essentially, uh, the new tools uh, that uh, we've been seeing happening in, in uh, or being implemented in Europe or Asia uh, will quickly come here, and new ones will uh, will come. Um, secondly, I think there will be um, uh, a new um, a new experience uh, coming into the stadiums uh, due to the fact that the return will be slow and there will be um, a, an escalated way into coming back into the stadium that will completely change the experience in the stadium. And going more deeply into the, the clubs, uh, this will lead into a revision of the structure, the, the financial structures of the clubs. Uh, as, as almost all of them were, were uh, received this big blow uh, on their financial due to the fact that they were not playing for, for such a long, a long time and they're still not playing, they will be, um, uh, there will be a, a necessity of reviewing the financial structure of the clubs. All the clubs or most of the clubs here in, uh, in South America are, are, are not profitable. Uh, even though some of them are, are companies, private companies, and, and not uh, uh, social clubs any, anymore, um, uh, these uh, these clubs are, are not profitable, and uh, and now you now you see the effect of that, and uh, that will have an effect on the on the players' salaries, will have an effect on how the the the, the managers manage uh, their their payrolls and, and their budgets and how, uh, where are you investing your money are you investing in 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 new experiences for the for the fans in order to get a, a, a better experience and more money from uh, uh, from them are you going to invest more in how you broadcast how you um, uh, develop your 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 uh, your team or your club uh, in the in the digital environment etc cetera, etc cetera. so i think that uh, that will be a positive effect on uh, on on this certainly that all the structure of the uh, of, of football uh, and at the club level will be revisited in order to uh, uh, to improve what was not being done properly in uh, in uh, in football here in South America. Great. No, no. I think it's you, uh, anyone. It's it's great because you answered the question uh, that we had from Fahil Kadi that on YouTube asked, how would clubs that heavily depend on match income adapt to the empty stadium? And I think not only the one uh, depending on, on, on match day income, but as well the one depending on television, which is uh, and, and on sponsors. So probably we all agree here uh, that, and you all for agree in what you said, that clubs with, with, will have to, to think a little bit more uh, differently uh, uh, the experience and the way they receive the money. One one interesting question comes from Jakob Uxra on, U on YouTube. Jakob asked, uh, if business is bad for the industry, one, how do you decide with one and one of uh, you want to go uh, to the final assessments? And are you not afraid to lose the best talent to other industries? Who wants to start? The people working for the clubs, possibly. <laughs> Let's see with Max. Are you not? Are you not just that the people may leave uh, football? Uh, I, I'm still trying to understand the, the the first part of the question with the final assessment, but the second part. Um, look, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be too concerned to lose someone to other industry because every industry is in the same boat. 
So, so I wouldn't know to which industry they should go. If you if you can't play football, it will be unlikely that you play cricket or rugby. I'm guessing. Um, so, so, so where where to go? Um, and on the other hand, also if you if you have a very talented, I mean, we're talking about professional players, and and it's not very common or often that you have a very talented football player who will also be then a talented professional rugby player or a tennis player. Yes. There might be the the one and another, but not it's not really common. So if you have your talent in, in, in football, for example, then then I think that's where your family is, that's where your home is, that's where you should express your skill and and and, and live it. So I'm not really concerned to to lose our best talent to another industry. Great. Yeah, uh, and uh, thank you. Uh, uh, you're right, and Jakub. Jakub, in his question, apparently uh, had it uh, one point. What about the staff roles inside the clubs? Uh, are you thinking to change the organigram? Uh, are you imagining to redistribute the position inside the clubs, inside the leagues, inside the federation, based on the new kind of relation you have inside stadiums and inside the relation with the media? Who wants to start? Maybe Dujini was starting to talk about it a bit. Yeah. Uh, the sound is a little bit uh, uh, disconnected. Oh, okay. So, the, hmm. the question was the question still by by Jacob was uh, what about the redeployment of the jobs inside the clubs and the federation based on the crisis? Uh, mm -hmm. Are some of the position to be changed by others uh yes uh, for sure uh, now i'm in charge of a uh, promotion and broadcasting side which is uh, uh, which became much more importantly thought than before so uh, we changed the uh, uh, budget uh, from offline promotion to the online promotion and we add on some uh, video content producer uh, more than before so uh, as sam as sam said as michael said uh, the maybe ticket sales revenue will be decreased uh, after uh, covid 19 uh, which means that we should recoup uh, the revenue from broadcasting side or, or uh, sponsorship so uh, uh, so so it should be uh, considered from every uh, club or every federation uh, to change their organization structure uh, in different way to uh, promote their content. Yeah, yeah. And, and hmm. clearly, uh, I think the, this question uh, may lead to the next one, which I would like to ask all four of you, because many of the people who listen uh, to this to this webinar are people who are working in the industry and willing to work in the industry do you see any changes in uh, the importance of the kind of jobs and the importance as well of the stadium based jobs uh, where for, for people who were willing to work on sporting events uh, what kind of jobs can they look for at the moment what what do you see the tendency that may appear let's start with jim okay um Here's the thing. I mean, what what I said earlier is that you know everything is interconnected, and you cannot just you know pick something and try to manage that. So uh, what I said earlier is that you know the world economy is getting a hit by this. You know, all the all the industries basically uh, are getting disturbed by this virus crisis. So why I think that the that the people are going to go back to the stadiums. The first, I mean, earlier than other revenues uh, that is being generated for, for sports like broadcast or sponsors or advertising, etc. Because uh, people, people are the first and primary focus of, of sport. It's not for clubs. I mean, the clubs, you cannot always say that the club is the product, but the league, the competition is the product. So people will come back to the stadiums much earlier than sponsors and broadcast 
uh, operations will be back to normal. You see what I, that's that's what I mean, and that that means that that sport basically they have to take everything on their in their own hands. Meaning, like you know, for many years, sport has outsourced its rights and its capabilities to other industries, to other industry players that were better in just carrying out uh, the task. So now football or let's say any other sport w are, is going to take uh, all the matters in hand, like, for example, broadcasting. The technology is, is developing and it's you know getting better every day. And the advantage, for example, that this coronavirus stuff has has been uh, has given to 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 the industry is is the home entertainment. You know, so people stay at home and they looked they looked for other ways how they can uh, you know entertain themselves, etc. So let's say football. I mean, it's it's true for any other sport, but let's go with football. So yeah, with football, they are giving their rights now to other companies. Who then going to sell these subscriptions to people? So these companies, like the media companies or the sponsors, it can be from tire industry or it can be from uh, I don't know beverage industry, etc. They are all hit by this crisis. So the money that they have, or the or the money that they are willing to allocate to sport as a sponsor, as as a communication uh, tool, is going to come back much later then the sport fan sure. itself. Yeah. So yeah. according to according, when, when we think the situation like that, I mean what the, the previous question what Jacob asked was the talent the talent was meaning actually that's what I understand is the management people, it's not the players. So of course I mean people who are talented people working in the industry, let's say in the sponsorship uh, activation people. When when this sponsor money comes comes back, let's say three years or five years later, get back, gets back to normal, then these people, these talented people, will have to change industries, of course. So mm -hmm. what, what football needs to do, or let's say sport, I mean in general, sport needs to do, is to take the matters in their own hands and deal with uh, all the business issues as they deal with, uh, with their team management or, you know, with player transfers. They never care about these operations as equal as the player transfer or, you know, dealing with, uh, with what's going on on the pitch. I know that's a point you, 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 you argumented for a long time, and, uh, that it is important that the, to have in-house made uh, business and not only looking from outside. That's exactly. And, and this changes the whole, the whole uh, organization Planning. I mean, now, of course, I mean, every, every day, every week, every month, they are doing more in-house than, than ever before. But, uh, but still, it's not enough. Not enough, not enough. So, you know. They I, I get to... your point. I get your point. So, more in-house job is what is required for the future. Michael, yeah, what correct. Would you say? Yeah. Michael, what would you say are the opportunities yeah. that should be done? I think that uh, the key word here is uh, is innovation. I think that uh, there will be a, a, a huge uh, reshuffle in the whole uh, entertainment and leisure industry, to put it on, a, on the broader picture. Um, and, and there will be a huge competition after uh, this whole situation in between this, uh, uh, the, the, the participants in this industry uh, to see who reacts better uh, to the to the new situation to the new the, the new picture uh, so essentially they're the ones that are uh, more flexible uh, that reacts uh, that react better to the um, uh, to the uh, the day after situation it will be the ones that will gain a lot of ground in a, in this race I think that the competition is not uh, will not be between in between clubs uh, or in between uh, uh, one sport or another one, you uh, you need to, to think about how people will be spending their time, where will they be spending their time, and the ones that put themselves in that situation and understand better how the behavior of the of the people will change after this uh, will be in a better position to uh, to gain a lot of ground and, uh, and to become the new leader. Football had been a leader uh, for 100 years now. 
uh, but it's not a given that uh, moving forward the football that we have known uh, up to now will uh, will remain a leader uh, maybe it will be another sport maybe it will be an e-sport maybe it will be another activity uh, for uh, for the people so that's something that we need to take into consideration the behavior of the people will change so the behavior of the organizations should also change Pierre, you're, uh, you're silent, you're, you're mute now. Sorry. Uh, Max, I know that in the past you were very interested to promote innovation in stadiums. Do you think uh, clubs, do you think potential investors may be more interested to, uh, to innovation? Let's say new technologies in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in energy saving, in being people friendly. Do you think that may have a new interest as well in, uh, in, in, in the future of the stadiums? Um, Pierre, to, to be honest with you, I, I think this should be in general our, our target and our goal to be more innovative, to use technology which we have today, which we didn't have before, uh, to make use it, to make it more, let's call it fan friendly, customer friendly, um, energy saving, um, all of this we should do anyways, irrespective of the current crisis um, so so the current crisis maybe pushes it a little bit forward and and lets us think a little bit quicker than we would anyways should do or would do um, in my personal opinion um, I'm a little bit more optimistic um, even though I appreciate the nice elaboration from for Michael um, I sincerely believe that latest latest when a vaccine is there which how long can that take a year one and a half years two years I, i'm not sure i'm not a, i'm not a, a doctor or a pharmaceutical specialist mm -hmm. but sp the latest when the vaccine is there we will 100 percent sure go back to the normal at the moment i i can describe it a little bit like we're driving past an uh, in, a, in a car we're driving past an accident so the next two days we will drive very slowly on the third day we will speed again and on the and on the on the fourth day we we we, we going without the seatbelt you know <laughs> we we go we go we, we drive crazy and and we take our lives in risk and and i think this is just a human character of 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 what the human is so so we we, we put it in our brains but we also forget and, and and we move on so i'm a little bit more optimistic uh, and i'm with on the same page as jim that we will go back to a to our old product to our old normal if if i may call it like this um but that doesn't take away that we should still be uh showing um initiative to introduce new innovations uh order you order your stadium drink to your seat uh make it contactless you don't have to stand in a queue anymore and keep social distance whatever you, you name it um just convenience and let's make use of that great no it's 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 absolutely interesting Dujin. You, the first experience you, you have from, from being back from this point of view, what are the new jobs and the, 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 the new innovation that must come out? Yes, for the K-League, the next, next step is accepting spectators. So to do that, the most important thing is maybe quarantine process and system. How could we detect uh, impacted person at the stadium and how could we treat when infected person is detected at the stadium. So we need to be prepared, uh, maybe with the IT environment for examination and tracking and treatment. So maybe hopefully these kind of integration of uh, IT uh, technology and stadium uh, could be very helpful for the future sport in different way and on also the unexpected area. So we don't know yet, but it would be very interesting to see how it evolves and how this new integration impacts on sports. In my opinion, uh, in the long term, the stadium environment will be changed with a cleaner environment and uh, various quarantine system after COVID-19. Maybe without that, maybe people do not want to visit a risky place in which could be infected by other persons. It means that 
the stadium should provide fans with the uh, experience which makes them feel safe and comfortable to uh, visit the stadium. For example, in order to keep uh, social dis distancing, maybe the club need to give uh, uh, enough roomy space per fan, not like a current compact space. For example, yeah. they need to keep with the uh, very clean uh, toilet uh, everywhere uh, with the uh, hand cleaner everywhere by regulation. Uh, in other words, stadium will adopt a comfortable and safe and family friendly yeah. environment and could lead us to gather more family fans or children fans or female fans as well. So, yeah. I, I, I completely agree with you, Dujin. And I think if we look at what happened after after the Hillsborough and when they decided, for example, to get rid of the cop in in uh, in Anfield Road, people said, no, it's impossible. The people will never accept to sit down in their stadiums in England. They accepted. They saw when mm -hmm. there was no choice and they saw there is innovation, necessity, things change. And I think the, the, the innovation with the Premier League started to give more space to women and children. And I think mm -hmm. at the moment, as a group that are forgotten in stadiums will become more and more important. And clearly, stadiums have to, in the club owners and stadiums will have to focus on other groups of the society that are a bit absent of the stadium. Maybe the, the elderly people, the, the children, and, and the family boxes. And these are elements that are important for the stadiums of the future. Well, I, I thank you all for really a lot about the very interesting uh, uh, aspect you were touching. Uh, I think we, we, we came to a conclusion of, of this webinar. Uh, I, uh, I hope that uh, you, your, your nice collaboration will continue and that we will be able to see the developments internationally. And I would like to introduce next week's, uh, ne next week's webinar. Uh, that will be uh, on a completely different different topic. Uh, it will be uh, the empowering women's football for the future and the places of uh, uh, women's football uh, in this crisis. I mean, uh, uh, don't forget that you can uh, uh, contact us and subscribe to the to the CIS uh, webinars. And it's always a pleasure. Bye and many thanks to all four of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pierre. Thank, Thank you, you Pierre. Pierre.